Welcome to Thinkation 2023. And it's my pleasure to be speaking to you on the topic of beyond government, your roles and responsibilities as a leader. In our world today, it's very common to think of leadership only for those who have titles. Um, church leaders, government leaders, leaders in, in church. And in fact, the first interaction we have with leadership is usually at home, the role of the father or the mother. So we always think leadership is this very vertical thing, the person who is talking down to us or giving us instructions. When we move away from home, we move, let's say, into a more social space, schools, the headmaster, headmistress, those are the leaders, the teachers. And then we move into the workplace, heads of departments, CEOs. Again, we keep associating leadership with titles. And so by the time we get into the even wider space of um, traditional um, authority, chiefs, princes, princesses, and then government, we still associate leadership with um, titles. And of course, with titles come privileges, benefits, VIP perks, and financial wealth. I think that this concept of leadership is flawed. We must all begin to see ourselves as leaders and to understand that just like governments, we have responsibilities in our sphere of influence because we all have circles of influence. Um, I want to speak to you today about Teta Kwashi. Teta Kwashi was a young Ghanaian who lived, okay, he was not a Ghanaian, a young Gold Coaster because he existed before the nation Ghana. Teta Kwashi was born in 1842 to parents who were not well-known in society. His father was a farmer from Teshi in Ghana and his mother from Labadi. In his teens, Teta Kwashi became an apprentice blacksmith in a Basel mission workshop. You know, the Basel churches were very strong in Ghana. They were, were one of the early um, bringers of Christianity to Ghana. Tetekwashi proved to be a very hardworking young man and soon he became a master blacksmith and was in fact the first blacksmith to be established in a part of Ghana called Equaping Mampong. Alongside being a blacksmith, his hobby was also farming. Now remember that he was born in 1842. In 1870, Tetekwashi, very young age, traveled to a place called Fernando Po, is now called Bioko in Equatorial Guinea. He spent six years in Equatorial Guinea. And when he was returning to Gold Coast, I keep saying Ghana, but Gold Coast, he returned with several cocoa beans. This is the history of the cocoa industry in Ghana. When he came back from Equatorial Guinea, he shared some of these cocoa beans he had brought with his friends and family. And in 1879, he planted some of the seeds at Mampong, a part of Ghana with some success. His friends and relatives that he had given the cocoa seeds to also undertook planting the cocoa pods and distributed them as well. Soon other farmers started planting the cocoa beans. At this point, the Basel missionaries realized something big was going on here and they started importing larger quant large quantities of the crop into Ghana, into the Gold Coast. <laughs> From this point, Beans or cuttings were sent to other countries in West Africa, such as Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And in 1891, Ghana officially started exporting cocoa. They started, these seeds were sent to Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And in 1893, Ghana officially exported two bags of cocoa. This is the history of cocoa in Ghana. And we all know that now Ghana is known as um, the number two, the second highest producer of cocoa globally. It all started with the actions of one man. Ghana earns millions of dollars every year from cocoa. It is estimated that we have between 800,000 and 1 million farmers, cocoa farmers in Ghana. That is one crop brought in by one person. It's given employment to over a million people currently. Now count the millions who have been employed in the cocoa industry from the time he brought cocoa into Ghana. We have chocolate, um, local, we have cocoa buying companies. We have Cocoa Board, the official exporter of cocoa in Ghana. And 
we have local produce buying companies, we have companies that process the cocoa um, beans into um, other cocoa products before they export. Think of the hundreds and possibly hundreds of thousands of jobs that Tete Kwashi alone created since he brought the first cocoa beans into Ghana. Ghana also has cocoa scholarships, which we give to cocoa farmers, the children of cocoa farmers and other um, indigenous children, which enables them to get an education. We have so many people employed today in the cocoa industry, making chocolate, making soap, making cocoa butter, so many products, all from the actions of one man. This is leadership. This shows you the power of one. What one person who is committed, who is invested in his community, who has passion in the community, can do to improve the lives of his community and the people of his nation. Um, Tetakwashi never had any political title. He was never elected or appointed into any office. But I believe that Tetakwashi has made probably the most impact, positive impact to the country Ghana, beyond all the people who have held offices or who have been called chiefs or other political titles. Um, recently, I stumbled on a young man in Ghana who is a um, teacher, primary school teacher in a very poor area of Ghana. I do not have his permission, so I do not want to state his name. Now, this young man, I've noticed, applies a lot of passion to the um, children he's teaching. His Facebook followers even know the names of some of the children in his class, the naughty ones, the diligent ones, and he keeps us updated of their antics and what they are doing even over the holidays. He also raises money to support children who need books, children who cannot afford maybe um, school supplies. This is going beyond the call of his duty. He has no title, but in my eyes, he is a leader who is taking on the roles and responsibilities of serving his society beyond his government. Last week, he launched a drive to um, raise money to build a library in the school where he's teaching. This for me is leadership. And this for me shows that you can really go beyond yourself. You can go um, without a title and you can serve your community. It is the power of one. The question today is what are you willing to do for your community? Do you recognize that you are a leader? You may not have any fancy title, you may not have financial wealth, but you are a leader. There are people within your community, within your circle that you can serve. From the stories of Tetakwashi and this young teacher, I think there are a few lessons we can distill. Leaders are people who care about their community. You must be passionate about your community. Leaders are people who have capacity. Tetakwashi was a blacksmith. Um, the young man is a teacher and they use whatever skills they have and capacity to build on other capacities and then they develop their communities. Leaders must have courage. You must have courage to take the first step. You must have courage to start doing something for the community, no matter how small it is. You need courage, you need capacity, you need to serve your community. Possibly the fourth thing I want to mention is that leaders need character. You must be guided by very values that you have defined. What are your values? What are you doing the things you're doing? What is the why? What, what propels you to do the things that you're doing? There must be your values that guide you kind of like a compass. And then you must know the ultimate reason why you're doing it, to serve the community. Tata Kwashi could have brought those cocoa beans and decided to keep it on his farm and just grow it and not share it with anybody. It would not have had the impact that it um, had. I think that if we all adopt this and start looking around us, there's always something we can do in our community that can impact the larger good. When Tata Kwashi brought the first few cocoa beans to Ghana, he could not have imagined the impact he's had for generations. But today, every time I remember Tata Kwashi, I thank God for him and I thank God twice because I think he's done incredibly well for the nation Ghana. So go out there today, be inspired by the story of Tata Kwashi and see what little good you can do in your community and God will bless that good and will turn it into something big. If we all do a little, we can all do a lot. So together, let's serve our communities and let's take on the title of leader. Thank you.